Okay, I want to spend some time talking about basic networking. Now, whenever we're dealing with Cisco, the thing that we need to understand is that Cisco defines almost everything in the context of the OSI model, the Open Systems Interconnection Model. This is what we refer to as the seven-layer model of networking. And it's comprised of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers. Now, we give each of these layers names. So as an example, the first layer is what is referred to as the physical layer. Now, the physical layer is going to provide services to the data link layer. The data link layer will ser provide services to what we refer to as the network layer. The network layer provides services to the transport layer. The session layer provides services to the transport layer. The presentation layer provides services to the session layer. And ultimately, we have the application layer. Now, you saw me choke. I choked right here trying to remember the order because this isn't something that I ordinarily do on a regular basis. But I had to go through a mnemonic in my own head and that mnemonic is a way for me to be able to memorize the order of these. In fact, there's two mnemonics that we work with. You'll notice that there, these are represented in a specific order. Now, the one that I use a lot of time goes from layer 7 to layer 1 and that is going to be all people seem to need data processing. However, if you want to remember it in the reverse direction, which is actually the, nor the, uh, the, the actual straight order for the Open Systems Interconnect model, the OSI model, what you're going to want to remember is going to be, um, please do not throw sausage pizza away. And it's odd that I would have to go through that in my own mind just to remember the actual configuration and the actual order. Now, I don't want you guys to wig out about all of this because what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these layers, we're going to talk about them specifically, and I am also going to kind of let you know that we ordinarily group these into sections. So, as an example, in networking, the area that we spend the majority of our time dealing with is going to try go from the physical layer all the way down to the networking layer. Now, I'm going to go so far as to bring up that when we start working in data center, we do a lot of service insertion, we do a lot of redirection, we do a lot of firewall insertion, something called firewall stitching, things that are probably you've never even heard of before. But we will spend time going or providing services in what we refer to as the L4 through L7 category of service. This is where we would pr provide things like um, load balancers. This is where we would insert things like firewalls. So we can't completely recuse ourselves from understanding the layer 4 through layer 7, but in this particular class, remember we're talking about DCICN and we're talking about CCNA level, which is associate level knowledge about these topics. So this is where we're going to spend the lion's share of our time. Now in, in DCICT, we will talk about the application-centric infrastructure that Cisco deploys. And that is Cisco's version of SDN networking. So it's going to be obvious that we need to at least understand and mention these. But it's not until later into the professional level certification that we're really going to spend any significant amount of time focused specifically on layer 4 through layer 7 services. So 
the lion's shower of our time is going to be spent focused on these top three, the physical layer that's going to be including the cabling, the transceivers, everything that we talked about in the infrastructure module. The data link layer governs layer two behavior, so that's switches. Well, guess what? By default, that includes virtually every Cisco manufactured device for data center deployment. And then the networking layer is going to be where we're going to be dealing with the communication and infrastructure necessary to talk between networks. Think layer two as devices that want to talk to each other on the same segment. Layer three is when devices want to be able to talk to one another and they're on separate segments. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do an itemized dis discussion on each of these individual topics and we're going to talk about where they are deployed. We're going to talk about how they're deployed, but before that I want you guys to understand that this wasn't just something that was dreamed up to make our life more complicated. Because as early as when I was working in networking, we had computers. So we'd actually be able to go out and buy computers. We didn't, just didn't do it online. There was no internet back then as far as uh, spread all over the planet. But when you went out and you bought an HP computer, or you bought an IBM computer. What ended up happening was is that in the very, very early days of networking, a lot of the concepts that allowed these devices to communicate with one another, say for instance an HP computer talking to another HP computer, or an IBM computer talking to another IBM computer, the technologies that allowed this to take place were proprietary. So they didn't have to share them. And the problem was is that if I bought HP and I was, had a pure homogenous environment where every computer that I had was HP, everything was good to go. But if we made a money decision, i.e. let's pretend that the IBM machines cost less and we wanted to actually start acquiring those IBM machines, there was a time in our history when HP would talk to HP but HP would not communicate with IBM. I'm just citing this as an example. And the reason being was is this proprietary infrastructure that dealt with providing this ability for us to be able to share via networking. And then in order to be able to prevent this scenario where I was locked into buying just HP or locked into just buying IBM, the industry standards body decided that they needed to come up with a standards protocol that was going to govern the way devices communicate. In other words, they wanted to come up with a way to define networking. Now, the definition of networking was governed by this OSI model, the Open Systems Interconnection Model. And what they did is they decided that if I had computers, so if I have a device here and a device here, and these devices needed to communicate with one another, they governed or came up with a way to be able to ensure that all the devices in this network would be able to talk to one another. So as an example, I mentioned the physical layer. Well, the physical layer in this scenario is what we would refer to as Ethernet. The Ethernet connectivity, it's not the only connectivity, it's not the first connection mechanism that we have, but it's what we have today in data center. And let's pretend that this is host one and this is host two, and they want to talk to each other. I'm not looking at the actual mechanisms behind this communication, but what I do want to do is I want to highlight the fact that there are going to need to be different places where we're going to be handing off communication. So as an example, let's say that in this host, I have an application. Well, it should come as no surprise that the application operates at the application layer. Same thing here. I have an application. And let's assume that these applications want to use the network to be able to communicate with one another. Let's say there's information on this host that this host needs to be able to get access to. And the only way that I'm going to be able to do that is I'm going to use the link between the two that are going to be allowing me to be able to connect. This is what we refer to as a host to host communications model. 
Now, when we look at this, what we're going to need to understand is, is that we have to get information from the application layer all the way down to the physical layer. Now, in order to be able to do this, we do this through a process of what we call encapsulation. So as data moves from the application layer up towards the physical layer, we do a process referred to as encapsulation. And at different levels of the OSI model, different types of encapsulation take place. And you can see almost immediately how this model as a standard basically set it up such that now if we're all following the same rules, if HP is following the same rules, if IBM is following the same rules, Dell, any other manufacturer of computers are following the same rules, we now have the capability of being able to ensure that devices are all going to be able to communicate. Now ultimately what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to get data to move from the application layer all the way down to the physical layer. Now in order to be able to accomplish this, we're going to have to kind of visualize that these different layers that I have drawn in here are representative of the different sections of the OSI model. So for instance, this would be the layer two. So this would be my data link layer. And this would be my data link layer here. Now the whole point of illustrating this is, is to highlight the fact that this is referred to as host to host communication. So it's important to understand that the data link layer between these two hosts are going to communicate with each other whereby the network layer, let me change pin colors here, where the network layer here is going to talk to the other network layer. And this is going to be through a process of not encapsulation as we move from the application layer down, we encapsulate if we're sending information, but if we're receiving information, what we're going to do is, is the reverse direction is going to be D encapsulation. So as we move from the physical layer down to the application layer, we de-encapsulate. As information moves from the application layer towards the physical layer, we encapsulate. And what are we encapsulating in? We are encapsulating and de-encapsulating a concept called headers. And we'll get into that when the time comes for us to start worrying about how information gets sent in this configuration. Now, the next part of this is to understand the fact that we need to look at the different levels here. So I'm drawing in just a handful of the configuration. So I have the physical layer, I have the data link layer, the network layer, and if we look at the configuration here, it goes from physical to data link to network to transport layer. So when we look at what happens here, I'm just going to write in transport. So this is the transport layer. And it should come as no surprise that the transport layers are going to communicate with one another in the host-to-host -host model. Now, it's going to arrive encapsulated for the data link layer. The data link layer is going to de-encapsulate it, and it's going to hand the header for the network layer up, and you're going to see how this handoff is actually going to traverse each of these layers all the way from layer one all the way to the layer seven, or the application layer. And it's also going to be very important for us to understand how things work. Now, from the perspective of Ethernet, we are sending information in the form of electrical pulses that are representative of data, and we call those ones and zeros. And for the most part, when it comes to the physical layer, it's going to be something that you can actually reach out and touch. Now, keep in mind, we, all, we have what we call copper, as well as what we call fiber connections, or fiber optic connections, and I'll just spell it this way, fiber optic connections that allow me to communicate. And if ones and zeros are the communication mechanism that takes place at the physical layer, it's important for, them to, for us to understand that the data 
units that we're sending are going to depend on the level that we're looking at, the layer. So when we start looking at the way we're going to be grouping things together here, the data link layer utilizes in Ethernet a concept called frames. So this is the data unit that I'm going to be communicating between the data link layer on this side and the data link layer on that side. And that is referred to sometimes as a data unit, but more often than not, it's called a protocol data unit or a PDU. So ones and zeros at the physical layer, frames at the data link layer, at the network layer, we exchange something called packets. Now, there are higher levels, but this is where we're going to block our communication just for the next little bit. Because remember, in DCICN, we have a section that is going to revolve around layer 2 functionality, i.e. Ethernet frames. And we have a section that revolves around layer 3 functionality, which is going to be packets. The difference between the way that we set these up and we do the configurations. So obviously there's more to this and we'll actually highlight that when the time comes. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this to a close. And what we're going to do is we're going to move into a more specific conversation about each of these layers. And again, I'm going to cover the physical layer, the data link layer, the network layer, transport, session, presentation, and application. I may group the L4 through L7 services together because it's not that significant to us. But when we start looking at this, it is important for us to understand what's being transmitted. The PDUs, those protocol data units. So at the data link layer in Ethernet, we use frames. In networking, we use packets. And it's also important for us to understand that data link layer is where Ethernet runs. The networking layer is where we have our IP protocol. And a lot of people talk specifically about IP protocol and TCP IP. But it's important to note that TCP and UDP actually operate at the transport layer. So that's one of the reasons that we need to actually come in here and take a look at what ends up happening when we start deploying and working with the open systems interconnection model. We'll explore this in further in the next set of videos. Till then, I'm Terry Vinson, and I'd like to thank you for learning Data Center with me.